Hi, everybody. We're live in Exploring Census Business Builder. I'm thrilled to meet you. My name is Jolie Golden, and I'm a data dissemination specialist for the U.S. Census Bureau. I'm thrilled to be joined by my colleague, Adam Grundy, who is in the Economic Management Division, and he is a supervisory um, statistician. He will be manning the chat and doing some demo later in our session. So, a little bit about me. I spent time as a partnership specialist during the 2020 census. I live in Manhattan and I cover New York City and Long Island. Um, I'm happy to come and do this presentation or other ones, um, both in person and virtually. If you're interested in more um, demonstration that we have online, you can access webinars. So we do both live webinars, we have recorded webinars, and also we have small videos called Data Gems, which are four to six minute how-to videos. They're super helpful. So you can find all of that and reach us also through census.gov slash academy. In terms of what we'll cover today, we'll do an overview of Census Business Builder. I'll spend just 10 to 12 minutes on some slides that include different paths for search through in Census Business Builder, reporting, a couple of minutes on an economic census overview. The economic census is happening right now. Um, and then we'll move to live demonstration, including examples that you can try on your own. So feel free to put any questions in the chat. Thank you everyone who's put a little bit about um, their names and where they're coming from. Um, it just gives us a better sense of who's in the session. And uh, it looks like we have an array of users um, including a strong showing from the controller's office. So thank you for being here. So in terms of the Census Bureau, during the nine years that we aren't doing the, the decennial census, which is an enormous national operation, um, we do 130 other surveys and programs, including the ones that you see here. Everything from the American Housing Survey for HUD to um, surveys for the Department of Labor, the Department of Justice, the CDC, and so many more. We also do our own surveys, which include the American Community Survey, where we survey 3.5 million people each year. We ask 72 questions. It's a huge source of data, and you'll see some of that populate on Census Business Builder. Um, if you want to find information and you're not quite sure where it is, is it on Census Business Builder? Is it on data.census.gov? Is it somewhere in another portal? You can search our new tool, which is called Census Survey Explorer. It's easy to find. Um, and you can search by geography, by frequency, by keyword. Um, it's a really nice addition uh, that helps you navigate our free data. So moving on to Census Business Builder. Um, so the nice thing about Census Business Builder is that in this new version, which I'm gonna show you, we have combined our regional analyst edition with our small business edition to create one easy to use map-based tool. It's a suite of services that provide select demographic and economic data, and it's tailored to different types of users. And it's really easy to use, but it's very helpful to go through this demo. Um, so stay with us. Um, you can search by for industries and data sets by a number of geographies, and we'll go through that. Um, this shows you Census Business Builder on the left. I happen to select New York City. Um, and the Census Business Builder tool is our first tool to be powered in the cloud. Um, it is, it's um, powered by Esri, and um, it uses an API to combine the data you're looking for with the geography to, to dynamically generate results. So you might wonder, where does all of this data for Census Business Builder come from? Well, it is sourced from many different surveys. Um, it is refreshed twice a year. So that data is refreshed in April and December. But everything from demographic statistics from the American Community Survey to business data from county business patterns, the economic census, non-employer statistics, survey of business owners, building purpose, so, so much data is combined in this one tool. 
And not only do you get the tool which generates the data, but there's really nice reporting, um, which you'll see. And then Adam will, will also show you live. So when you land on Census Business Builder, cbd.census.gov, you'll see that you have, you have the option right here on this splash screen to either put in a location, and you can start with any location, or you can take a tour. And I have to say that if you haven't been on the site before, it's really helpful to see the core functional, functionality pop up on the tour. Um, it takes just a couple of minutes, and it'll lead you through the many different parts um, of Census Business Builder. So we can talk about business data if we don't talk about NAICS codes. So the NAICS hierarchy is extremely important when we're searching for industries in different sectors. And one of the key things to know when we'll be looking for data by NAICS code is that in terms of the hierarchy, the more digits in the code that you put in, the more specific data you will get spit out. Um, so if I start looking for radio stations, I'll be able to see the sector, the subsector, and eventually get down to this, to this 515112 six digit code. And we'll use examples that have pet hospitals and sporting goods stores, but you can search by any NAICS code. All of the data that we, that we are sharing is protected through Title 13 and Title 26 for business privacy and confidentiality. So sometimes you may only be able to see data by four or five digit codes, um, and some data may not show at all for privacy reasons. In terms of employer versus non-employer businesses, Employer businesses are businesses with employees. So to give an example, if I were the owner of Jolie's Taco Trucks and I own three trucks and I have five employees, I'm an employer business. If I own Jolie's Taco Truck, I have no employees. Or if I own Jolie's real estate brokerage and I'm the sole person working there, then I'm a non-employer business. So you'll see that will that's something important that'll come up. We're going to do a quick tour of the um, of the homepage here, and the first thing to look at is our dashboard, and you can see all of the different statistics, the different variables that populate. This is the great state of Nebraska. Um, you can build a custom region. We'll talk more about that in a minute, and you can do reporting for that aggregate reporting for that custom region. This is the location search, where you'll put in your NAICS code. This is where you can put in not one, but two different variables. And those variables will show down here. You can put up to five filters. You can download the map in shapefile, CSV, or Excel. And you can also put in a base map and change the transparency. The legend will show you what's going on here. You can change the color of the map and reconfigure it. Excuse me. So that's a little bit about the key map features. Oh, and most very important, this is on the left is where you create your report in, in this dashboard, or if you create a custom region, this would, would be highlighted and you can create the region report that way. What the report will look like when it shows up is this and you can see what the what the geography was that was selected and what industry was were selected um, was or what you can click more you can select more than one industry the important thing about this content panel that'll show up for the report is that you need to scroll down so when you scroll down you will see so much more data and also you can click on these icons on the right and dynamically generate and change these tables and when you download the report, I'm just consulting my note here, it will download into CS, CSV, Excel, or PDF. So there's a lot of functionality to explore. You can customize the report and you can always bookmark the report. In terms of building a region, 
that's this little build a region tool here. And the region that I'm showing is Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. Um, you can build a region of two or more geographies of the same type. You can build a region of two or more geographies of two or more types. And you can build a region using pre-built regions. And those pre-built regions are weather forecast offices, small business administration hub zones, and HUD opportunity zones. Now, as promised, we'll talk just for a minute about the economic census, which is happening right now. So we are collecting data for the economic census through March 15th. It is conducted every five years. It produces the most comprehensive economic data available, and it's collected in years ending in two and seven. So right now we are collecting data for businesses reporting their 2022 year end numbers. The economic census is collect, conducted online and response is mandatory. Data includes number of establishments, products, revenue, and more. Um, and it's a key source of data for the GDP and the national income and products accounts, the producer price index. It offers business information on business locations, the workforce, and trillions of dollars by product and sale type and service type. So what businesses are responding? Well, we collect, we conduct the census with businesses with employees. So only employer establishments. And we are, conduct, we are gathering information from over 8 million employer business establishments. Only 4 million will receive the economic census. We only sample, uh, we do a sampling of smaller businesses. Um, but then we use, um, we use direct data collection and administrative records to collect for the remainder of the other 4 million. So that data will be available starting in spring of 2024. We're all very much looking forward to it. And now I'm going to jump to the online demonstration so that you can see um, cbd.census.gov in action. And Adam is going to paste the first example into a chat. You can into the chat. You can you can follow along or feel free to try it out on your own. And the example reads: We're looking for sporting goods. Where to open a sporting goods store? So Zakira wants to open a sporting goods store in Queens County, um, and New York. What is the total number of employer? and non-employer sporting goods store businesses in this geography. So this will be our first, our first example. Um, I'm just, just going to share my screen again. There we go. So here we are in Census Business Builder. Um, Adam, you can see? Uh, yes, we can see it. Great. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look in this location search. If you wanted to take the tour, you could take the tour here. But I know I'm focused on Queens, specifically on Queens County. So when Queens County pops up, I'm going to select it. And not only does Queens pop up in the map and you can see it selected, but the, some data for Queens County automatically will populate. So this is some basic population statistics. Um, employers, 50,000 employer establishments total, and more. Um, you can see the legend over here on the right. And I know that we are looking, Zakira is looking for a sporting goods store. So the easiest thing for me to do, I'm going to put in sporting goods. If I didn't find what I was looking for, I could look under other store types, but sporting goods pops up nicely. And I can select either of these codes. If I wanted, I could also add new sporting goods stores, but I'm going to stick just to sporting goods for now. If I click outside, that'll disappear. And I can see, I can pick my variable. So up here, we have businesses, quarterly businesses, building permits, consumer spending. I'm going to go for businesses. And I'm looking for employer businesses. So we're looking for employer versus non-employer. And when I click on employer establishments, 
one of the nice things about this tool, that was my secondary category, is that it immediately generates. We also wanted non-employer establishments. So for non-employer establishments, I'd click again on businesses annual, and I could click here on non-employers. So to get the number of non-employer firms, um, my, my best guess, Julie, is that we should select the NAICS code at the five digit rather than- Okay, let's do it. We, we do. So this is a live example of what sometimes happens when searching for data. Um, so I'm searching under the 45111, and now there are less non-employer businesses. So the non-employer firms are showing up now. So if I wanted to get the total, what I could do is I could search by key ratio and put total number of employers and non-employers. And so that will immediately generate. So now I can see that there are, if I'm considering opening a sporting goods store in Queens, there are 93 employers and non-employers total. What's also interesting is I could click on any of these and dynamically this would change for nearby counties. So if I, I can look in Suffolk County and I can see, wow, there are a lot more sporting goods stores in Suffolk County. I can see what the median income is and what the employer establishments are. Um, you know, and it's really easy to keep, just to click around on the map. And this takes me right back to Queens. If I wanted to create the report, I would click here on the left. So now I'm going to hand this over to Adam and I'm gonna have him create a region. Um, I'm stopping sharing, Adam, your app. So if there's something specific that you would like us to search or look for after we do these next two examples, please feel free to put it in the chat and we're happy to, um, to show it. Okay, thank you guys so much for, for your time today. I'm gonna to start off by looking at my location of, let's go to, I'm trying to remember my example now, uh, Nassau County. So I'm gonna type in Nassau County, New York. And as Jolie mentioned, one of the first things that's gonna pop up is the total population that you'll see here. I'm gonna start by doing pet hospitals. I selected my industry and going to type in pet hospitals, which is also very important because if you don't know your NAICS code, you can also look at keyword searches for this type of industry. So you see the main category of veterinary services has been added to our industry. Now I'm gonna select business annual. Employers is the secondary category and all employer establishments. Anytime you see an arrow next to one of these things it means you can drill down into the total number of employees or things like that that relate to that radio button that's next to it. So for now, I'm just gonna click all employer establishments. And the secondary variable in this case is I'm gonna again do what Julie did before, business annual non-employers, and all non-employer firms, okay? So at this particular NAICS code, there is no non-employers for vet hospitals or pet hospitals for this one, okay? So now I'm gonna take a look at building a region. You see the region view over here at the top of my dashboard. I'm gonna click on this little uh, button here and I'm gonna select edit region. And I'm gonna add a few different counties to my results. So first of all, I'm gonna select uh, my current county, Nassau County. You see the red outline is now changed in the background. I'm gonna select the county to my right, which happens to be Suffolk County, New York. And I'm also gonna select the Bronx County of New York. Once I'm done building my region, I can name my region. So just for this example, I'll call it Pet Hospitals Region and I'm going to click Finish. After I click Finish, I'll see that the Create Region Report button has now populated. I'm gonna select Create Region Report in this case. So from there in this report, like Julie mentioned in the presentation, the first thing you'll notice is what category you're looking at, which in this case is veterinary services or pet hospitals. Uh, you see the name of my region is also populated, pet hospitals region. And then this is a combination of all three of these counties in here. If I just want to look 
drill down into one of those specific counties, I can select the hyperlink that is located in this report. So let me tell you a little bit about what's in this report, first of all. One of the first things you'll see is some demographic characteristics, such as our consumers and residents. Uh, if I was looking to open a restaurant or a bar, uh, things like percent 21 years and over might be important to me. So I can select that on the chart to the right, and you'll see the, pop, the, the chart will repopulate with that data right on the right-hand side of that display. If I continue to scroll down, I'll see some socioeconomic characteristics. And much like Census Business Builder, the tool, and the report, anytime you see an arrow, that means you can drop down and drill down into more specific data. So instead of percent of all workers 16 and over who commute to work, you can see who drives alone, carpools, walks to work, other types of things like that. Housing characteristics, such as the total number of housing units, uh, single detached fit, uh, family detached units, all those different types of characteristics are included in this report as well. So it gets you to little, know a little bit more about your clientele. And when we get to the business summary, which is my expertise on uh, business data, we can take a look at employer businesses, such as the total number of employer establishments, population per employer. And in this example of total revenue, we can also figure that out as well. So now we get to our business revenue. The average revenue per, per employer is 1961 and that's on an annual basis, the average revenue per employer. If you look for the total revenue of all employers, that would be 523,600 or $523,600 per year. If we get to non-employer businesses, we don't have any data available at that specific NAICS. So usually in that case, we back out to either a four or five digit NAICS code in order to figure out what non-employers are available. And again, quarterly workforce data is not showing up here because it's not available at that specific NAICS or those specific counties. When we get to quarterly business, we do see some data here for a number of establishments, uh, some employment data in here, and wage data. That would all be important for you to figure out if that's the best place to open up a business. Also, the business comparison. We're looking at other businesses like yours, and you want to know the competition. You can see for all sectors of the economy, first of all, is the top line, and also the different sectors we have here, such as arts, entertainment, and recreation, construction. And if we go further down, we'll get into the healthcare and social assistance, which is what uh, this main NAICS category would be for pet hospitals. Other key ratios, such as average employment per employer, average revenue per employer, population per employer, all these types of things would help you with making a better informed decision to open up a business. And then for uh, the last part is just our business data on the business owner, uh, such as you know, the percent minority owned businesses uh, that are uh, available, percent black owned employer firms, things like that. This all comes from our annual business survey. And then the last thing that, that's important to kind of showcase with you with using consumer spending data is the data that's available from that we purchased from Esri that uses the credit card receipts and things like that uh, in order to figure out how much people are spending on certain geographic locations on either, you know, household services such as care for the elderly or housekeeping services, or in this in this example, we're looking at pet hospitals. We can look at how much people are spending on, you know, personal care products and services. And again, you can always drill down into those more specific things, such as medical services or non-prescription drugs. So that's just a quick demo about you know, how Census Business Builder works and how the report functionality works. Uh, I'm gonna look hey, at Adam. our numbers. Yes. Um, so we have, we have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, a few questions. So the first question relevant to this example that you're just working on is uh -huh. by pet hospitals. This is referring to major organizations such as the ASPCA or does this also include emergency care centers? In other words, is there a definition of category somewhere? Sure. So if I wanted to look for the actual description of, of what um, pet hospitals are included, I can go to census.gov slash NAICS. Okay. From there, I can type in, you know, pet or pets or just start with pets for to start off with. And we can go to until we get to pet hospitals. 
We just see pet food, first of all. And then if we go further down, we can get into our uh, business data for pet sitting, pet training services, pet hospitals. Or if I happen to know the NAICS code, I can go right to it, 541940. From there, this tells you everything that's included in veterinary services. This includes animal hospitals, vet clinics, uh, vet offices, and also the testing laboratories. So everything that you see in the NAICS description can be put into this uh, website of census.gov slash NAICS. So this tells you everything that will be included in that. So that's a great question. Okay. Um, another, an earlier question that came in was um, related to alcohol serving businesses concerning uh -huh. on-site and off-site, if this can be done. And I know that we can't do this. Um, um, I believe so. Yeah. Usually the consumer spending data on about alcoholic beverages comes from the point of purchase. So that could be something that is on-site or potentially off-site, depending on the type of business that they have. Um, do you think we could do an example, Adam, live? Uh, let me get back to the report real quick and I'll do that. I wonder if we could do, um, if we could do, I'm, I'm not concerned about staying in this geography. Maybe, maybe we could look at, um, we so could look at New York City or look at, sure. look at LA County. Like, so if I wanted to look at, you know, just the associate economic characteristics, I can look at percent 21 years and over for this particular geography. And then that could help me determine, you know, how many people are there in the population that would be eligible to drink alcohol, obviously, too. Um, and then if we want to look at alcohol beverages here, we can look at our uh, consumer spending data on how much people spend on alcoholic beverages consumed at home, first of all, beer consumed away from home, and then wine consumed away from home as well. You see the estimates are right here on an average basis. And this is from 2021. Um, we have, I have a couple more questions. We also have, we have an example for people to do on their own. Sure. So I'm going to put the example for people if they want to do something on their own, and then we'll show you how to work through it. Yep. Um, but in the meantime, we'll also just go through some of these questions. Um, so there was a question about how would a grammar school search for newborns? so they can project future enrollees for 3K, pre-K and early K education. So that question, frankly, is much better answered on data.census.gov. Mm -hmm. um, you can pull up some data through here, but I can show, you know, if, you, if, you, if that's the kind of data you're interested in, please feel free to email me. I'll put my email again in the, in the chat and I can set up a private session for you or your organization on how to find that data, map that kind of data, that kind of demographic data. There are some amazing things that we can do. Um, so we're not gonna spend time right now on that. If we have time at the end, I can, I can see if I can, pull, I can definitely pull that, I can pull some of that up. Um, there was a question about daycares. Okay. If, there, if there's a way to see more or less expensive ones. Um, I can tell you, I was looking at daycare. Day, daycare is a great example because there are so many daycares and there are many employer versus non-employer businesses. It's a great example for, for that as well. Okay. So if I want to look at daycare services, I can, first of all, get rid of my old industry and I can start to type in, you know, some of the other, oh, this is a cluster. That's why. Uh, let me exit out of this real quick and go to our... Daycare services. Let's see what comes up if we have anything. Well, if that's not working, then I'll just go back to the beginning real quick. So bear with me here. Um, so I'm going to select a new industry, type in daycare. Give that, there we go. It was a space that was throwing it off. So we have child care services. Um, that would be the main one we have here. We also have babysitting services and child daycare centers also included in this. So first of all, I'm gonna start with a, uh, a more condensed NICS code, a four digit code of child daycare services. And now I'm gonna choose my geography by going to let's say New York City. And this will start to tell me a little bit more about the population. And then if I wanna look at the actual uh, data for the businesses, I would have to change my variable. 
So I'll leave the total population as my first variable. The secondary variable I'm going to do for business annual and employer establishments. Okay. So now I can see there's no data. There is data available at the population level, but not at the city level. And all these little concentric dots are all the different types of secondary variables of the ones you can see here. And you can click on each of those dots to get a little bit more about the, the population that's included in that. Again, we usually recommend that you start at the county level when you look at um, business data, because there's much more data available when you get to the county level and these types of examples. Uh, but if you're looking for revenue or things like that about the daycare services, each of those can easily be found within the Census Business Builder report. Do anybody else have any other questions? Uh, yes. Um, so there was a question about, will the census business data or statistics be available at the census tract level or any other geographies that's smaller smaller than county in the future? Sure. So usually when you get down to more specific geographic levels, like you're mentioning census tract, there are fewer business data available. There are a few different surveys and programs that do go down to, go down to the census tract level. Usually that comes from our more comprehensive surveys like the economic census. So right now the 2017 economic census is the most current one that's been published for the for the data available at the track level. But again, you know, the, the 2022 economic census is currently underway. Data collection is going up until tomorrow. Uh, we we'll, have the first deadline for the economic census. So that the, the more updated data at the track level won't be done until closer to uh, next spring, unfortunately. Uh, but we do have data available at the track level for certain surveys and programs. Did we answer, is there a way to see more or less expensive daycare? Like, is there a way to see pricing comparison? Usually not, at, usually not at the pricing level of the actual daycare itself. Uh, we do have revenue data available. Like if I were going to back out into county for this one, New York City, and select, let's just say a different county over here. This is Hudson County, New Jersey. And if I click on well, the, the first variable here, business annual, and I look at total revenue of, um, of employers. That tells me a little bit about how much these people are charging for the daycare centers by the total revenue that they're getting. So again, a fairly expensive area you can see. It's this, and if you hover over it, it gives it a tool tip that says it's the total amount received from customers or clients of employer establishments for products shipped, services rendered. So in this case, obviously it's the services rendered for you know child daycare ser services. So you can get a little bit about the type of information by the total number of establishments and the revenue, and then kind of divide it up to kind of get a basic amount of how many, uh, how much they're charging per person. But again, usually the, the individual businesses would have more of that type of data for them. But yeah, you can tell a little bit more about the clientele by looking at some of these data points for sure. Um, someone asked, in a private question to me, if we charge for more focused um, technical presentations or more focused presentations. And I just want to be clear that we work for the federal government. We do not charge for our presentations. We do not charge for our data. Um, this is a free service. So if you had, um, if you're an organization that's looking for specific kinds of data, whether it's through Census Business Builder or one of our other, you know, we often demonstrate on data.census.gov, which is another bedrock of information, which combines many surveys. Um, we, we absolutely um, do that for free. Yep, uh, and there is a spot on census.gov where you can actually request a training. It's a spot called Census Academy, and there's a button that says you can request a training, and that would uh, send out either a data specialist or an outreach specialist like myself to come and give a presentation, whether that be in person or in a virtual capacity. I'm just putting my my information in the chat because we, especially since this is this is pretty New York City focused, or if you're in other parts of the country, we can direct you um, to our colleagues. Okay, Definitely. so there's a question about consumer expenditures per household. Okay, where, where is info on what income levels were used to compile the details? Are the expenditures available from different income levels? Uh, if I go back to that report for the 
consumer expenditures. I can give you a little bit more of an example about where that comes from. Um, it's towards the bottom of the report where we see our consumer expenditures data. Um, if you click on this little button here, it tells you a little bit about where the consumer spending data comes from. If you're curious about that, all of our different uh, tool tips in here tell us, tells us a little bit more about where that's coming from. But really this is from all different types of demographics. Uh, the ones that I've selected for this geography and also all different clientele that would be for all, all types of incomes. So it's, this is just the average amount that people spend on, you know, food consumed at home on these types of categories. It's, it's a broad category of everyone living in this particular uh, county, which is Hudson County, New Jersey. Um, does that come from county business patterns? Uh, this is actually purchased directly from Esri. The Census Bureau purchases uh, this consumer spending data directly from Esri in order to put it back into this report for free. Um, and in terms of, um, just so people know, in terms of our population data, uh -huh. whether it, either it's coming from the decennial, some of it will come from the decennial census, um, but it will also come from population estimates and it will also come from the 72 questions that we ask annually in the American Community Survey, those are 3.5 million households that are randomly sampled throughout the country in every county. So um, just to know, those are pretty deep characteristics. Yep. Um, and you can, you can always get, if you're unsure about where in the report the data is coming from, we always do a little tool tip at either the top or the bottom of the, of the little dashboard. And this one comes from our five-year American Community Survey estimates. So it tells you the years that it's covered and also the, the dates, date ranges for the ACS as well. And the ACS is now, um, just so everyone knows, is now updated to 2021 on data.census.gov. It will refresh on this site at the next, at the next update, which should be in April. Yep. Um, so there's a question the question about how accurate is this data? And in terms of census business builder um, and what quality assurance efforts are in place to ensure accurate accuracy. So we do a tremendous amount of work before we release the data to make sure it's accurate. Um, and in terms of accuracy, there's there's the, you can access margin of error on certain surveys, mm -hmm. but not on others. Um, Adam, do you wanna talk about the noise? what you were sharing with me yesterday? Yeah, so counting business patterns uses a thing called noise, which uses, you know, administrative data and things like that to kind of put it in a nutshell about, you know, the estimate number of businesses in a certain geographic location. But again, this is done because we want to protect the individual businesses that are reporting to our great surveys and programs out there uh, to make sure that we give the best estimate out possible at the Census Bureau's standards. Um, but again, we need to protect the individual businesses as well to make sure they feel comfortable reporting to the surveys. Okay. Um, so do we have a resource document that has all the URLs discussed today that can be shared? Um, I have to say that I'll put in the two, the two URLs that we really shared are, are just data.census.gov uh -huh. and cbb.census.gov. Um, how easy is it to export the data for local use and analysis? So um, as previously mentioned, the data is able to be exported by a CSV, Excel, um, and Adam's pointing to it right there, and PDF in the reporting, and CSV, Excel, and Shapefile in the maps. So it's, re it's really easy to yeah. export, and I have to say that it exports nicely. Um, so when you get that Excel spreadsheet, it really, um, Adam, do you want to show them the Excel? Like it's sure. it's, it's pretty easy to use. Um, the formatting may be slightly nicer with on, on data.census.gov, but everything you need will be there. Yep, um, so this tells us about the different categories that we looked at, for the businesses, uh, demographic characteristics, and you scroll over and you see all the ones have been downloaded for that geography that you selected and also for those uh, different NAICS categories. So it downloads really, really quickly into a nice little CSV file that you can manipulate for your own purposes.
um, can we have data to sync with our markdown? I know we do a lot with our, um, this one, I may have to get back to you. Adam, do you have any thoughts? Uh, can you repeat the question? I didn't hear the first one. Yes, part. they asked if we if they can have data to sync with R, like R, R the programming markdown. I'm not familiar with that, but if you can send us an email with that specific question of what type of data needs you have, I can make sure I point you to the right person if it's not. There, really yeah, there are actually, um, a, you know, and I'm not sure, I don't think it's specific to business data, but we have whole um, webinars and very technical courses that you can sign up for online yeah. dealing with with, thing, with programs like R um, and um you know, if you're really interested in diving deep into our API, we have a th offer a three hour API course. So there's there are definitely far more technical courses that yeah. you can access today was was more of an overview um, of census business builders. So for New York County, our socioeconomic characteristics broken down by area. If so, how are the areas determined? Uh, the areas are determined basically by the geography that you select initially. Uh, so if this one is just Hudson County, New Jersey, if I was going to build a bigger region and do cities and towns combined with counties, you can do that. And it repopulates it all into the same region report. So all the it's all determined by which county or geography that you select initially. Um, I think, I think we've, we've covered a lot of questions. You know what, Adam, just, um, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And Let me stop sharing. Just now. take us for a minute to um, data.census.gov because I feel like people have touched on enough questions sure. that that could be answered in that platform. That I just want to show people, just give you a a, a taste of what it what it looks like. Um, because we have a we have a few minutes, and we can easily flip back to Census Business Builder, but for for sort of more social characteristics. Um, this is data.census.gov and you can dive into advanced search, search by year um, and by topic. So when you're looking for income data broken down, this is a good place to go. You can go to income and earnings um, and see a whole lot of data broken down. Um, this wasn't what we were thinking we were going to show today, but I just want to give you a little, just a little bit, a little look at what's here, because um, someone was looking to dive down by tract. So if I go to New York, I can actually search. Um, I can go by county. We were in Queens before. Um, let's go. We'll go to Manhattan now. Um, and I can click all census tracts within New York County and search for that data. And, you know, for this one, 152 tables came up. This is just demonstrating a little bit of the depth of data that you can find um, through the Census Bureau. Um, and here's income, mean, in, median income in the past 12 months. Um, and it'll show, this isn't a stop sign, it's a yield sign, click open the table and the data will load and it will be broken down with different socioeconomic characteristics, family income, et cetera, et cetera. And you can map this data. So anyone who's interested in this, feel free to contact me and we can dive deep um, into this data and mapping. But I just wanted to give you a little bit, a taste of, of, what's, of what's available. Um, so back to, um, I'm going to stop that sharing um, and pull back up. Let's, let's go back to Adam. Are you still sharing for data for Census Business Builder? I am not, but I can if you need me to. Uh, here we got. We have more questions. Sure. Um, on CBB, I'm seeing zip and tracked breakdowns within New York County, Manhattan. So yes, you can dig into demographic statistics. This is from from Rob. Um, but it's just, you just have to know that as you dive deeper into smaller geographies, less data may show for you. Um, so that's just something important to know. 
Yeah. If I, I was like, if I was going to drill down to the city and town, you see a lot more gray on the map. And gray, unfortunately, means there's no data available at that geography level uh, that you've selected of city town. And then it, it says not available or suppressed because we have to protect the individual businesses at that certain geograph geographic level. But if I were going to select this one here, this is Jersey City, New Jersey. And if I continue to scroll in or zoom in, I should say, I can go now down to zip code. And it's giving me a warning area that it's removing certain variables, but you can see the zip codes are there. And if I continue to scroll further in, I can look at the census track level. Um, this tells us all the different census tracks, but again, for this particular NAICS of uh, child daycare services, there might be some that are suppressed. You can look at our, our legend over here about how many are located at each track level. So this one has a, a large number right here based on the shading. And this tells us the total population at that census tract level. So it depends on what you're looking for, what your data needs are. You can build your own region based on track level if you needed to. Okay, uh, someone's asking about language spoken by borough in New York City. Okay. That is, we have a, a table called language spoken at home. Um, Adam, can you get to that through yeah. Central yeah. Business Builder? Oh, great, let's see. I believe so, yeah. Let's just go to a different uh, I'm region. Sure that I'm data that census I've got, but let's, I'm curious to see what service is here. So, so um, I'm just gonna select a random county here of Kings County, New York, and click Create Report. From there, it'll tell us about the languages spoken at home and some of the socioeconomic characteristics. So we have the, about the population, and then this is the percent speaking Spanish at home, uh, Indo-European languages at home, and Asian Pacific Islander languages at home. So we do have that within the, the report as well of these three categories. Uh, I know the American Community Survey might have a few more uh, categories of languages in a more specific manner. Uh, so you could also utilize, on, like Julie said, data to, to kind of drill down to which languages you're looking for for this particular county. So you can, if you're looking for, sometimes it's helpful to look for um, ancestry and you can, yep. look, you can look through um, country of origin. Um, and you can also look at there's a table B16001. It's one that I actually often demonstrate when, when I'm in a, when I teach a, you know, when I'm invited to teach a sociology class. Um, and that will break down a whole bunch of different languages. Um, yep. Someone mentioned for New York City, you can also look at <clears throat> New York City city planning. New York City Population Fact Finder is a wonderful resource based on census data. Um, sometimes it's a little bit behind us in terms of releasing the data, but it is an amazing resource, especially to aggregate data. Um, so I think, um, so someone asked, should we use this or the American Community Survey? Well, this is populated, you know, Census Business Builder is populated by American Community Survey. If you're looking for business-related data and social characteristics that correspond to that business-related data, Census Business Builder is an amazing tool. If you're just looking for social characteristics and breakdown of American Community Survey data, then you will get deeper responses if you look at data.census.gov. And also um, my colleague, if anyone's going in person on Saturday, my wonderful colleague, David Craker, will be doing a live demo. He's a geography, amazing geography whiz. Um, and David, this fellow data dissemination specialist, he'll be doing that session and he'll have these I was showing you my sticker that says data nerd on it. So you could even get one of these stickers uh, that I that I bring with me too when I go in person um, to various sessions. So um, as we're as we're sort of timing down on the clock here, I want to thank um, I want to thank Open Data Week. I want to thank Adam um, for being so helpful today on this session. And I just want to reiterate that please feel free to email us directly and we're happy to send, set a private session um, or a session with your colleagues at a local organization and answer all of your very specific questions and do deeper training.